we're just kind of catching up with you know um on the same unit that we've been covering which is technology in tourism and hospitality sector um, yes in the second learning outcome just a quick recap you know what we looked at were a couple of things with regards to uh, let's let's look at say learning outcome one so in learning outcome one we discussed and looked at you know how technology has kind of started to shape things in this sector so we looked mm-hmm. at a bit of a image or a picture if you recall which shows how technology has actually come into our day to day lives in the last 30 to 40 years and with the advent of internet connectivity uh, you know a lot of things with regards to how we perform functions uh, you know operations within this sector have really got transformed in terms of new increases in productivity efficiency <laughs> and also availability of information which is now happening in uh, you know on in just just in time basis and we also look at some of the contemporary issues which are issues which are ongoing modern issues which technology can help resolve and solve uh, you know things like um, availability of rooms management of for example information of guests and all those things is something which technology has kind of you know facilitated in terms of uh, making sure that uh, you know there is streamlined flow of communication and also information available to be able to serve and better create a customer experience you know in real time basis mm-hmm. now in the second learning outcome we went on to understand some of the systems which are deployed now within you know most of the uh, you know um, let's put it this in most of the uh, you know places within this sector whether we look at resorts hotels tour operators we look at uh, you know suppliers partners they all have some sort of a uh, you know information system which allows yeah. them to look at making decisions or you know having access to information depending on the hierarchy in which they are uh, in the organization so depending on if you are in the front desk or maybe in the junior level you have access to you know operational systems if you are in the middle management you have access to things like uh, you know systems which primarily um, help you to get hold of knowledge or data which can be actually converted into some sort of information on which you can actually derive knowledge and these tend to be office systems eppx and you know uh, booking systems people who are in the senior management or in the top tier of the organization have access to things like decision support systems executive support systems and that is where these different types of mis is what we looked at in learning outcome yeah. yeah. one of the other things which we also covered which has become something uh, kind of a de facto standard now is because of the availability of internet and connectivity the online travel agencies otas and their role and how you know people look at now getting all of information on the internet by doing searches uh, you know and some part of that was related to marketing because when companies look at publishing information uh, as against unlike you know previous days when they look at brochures and flyers and information going across as word of mouth from the tour operators or travel operators all this is now kind of you know uh, electronically available on the internet through the websites and that is where the concept of meta search or you know some of the things like pay per click advertising search engine optimization call to action ctas all those things have started to creep in into this sector and for that and for managing all this also most companies today employ what is called uh, you know complex management information systems and these tend to be uh, you know in large organizations when you get taking the example of Hilton group Marriott uh, some of the others that we talk about what we do get to see is they have some sort of enterprise resource uh, uh, planning systems ERP that we call them and they tend to be uh, you know systems which can have uh, uh, which can use reports but also have can have inputs coming across from various other uh, different types of MIS systems in say for example a hotel when we looked at input into the process we go wireless to us all that information can actually go into uh, these systems for it to be able to generate meaningful reports so that's where we you know looked at covering and uh, you know, we really looked at kind of our discussion in that chapter too now taking that forward today we are going to be looking at covering learning outcome 3 and in learning outcome 3 we are looking at stretching the thread of you know marketing that we looked at uh, and how technology has enabled digital marketing to happen and uh, you know in learning outcome 3 we are going to be studying the impact of internet 
terms, which will be in particular on the healthcare sector, travel, tourism, and hospitality sector. Mm -hmm. So we'll be covering three learning outcomes, uh, sorry, three assessment criteria in learning outcome three, and we will be to understand what is the important of, importance of internet in international marketing, uh, yeah, particularly you know when you look at uh, hotels, resorts, when they are looking at you know positioning themselves, uh, not just the locals, but international tourists who also come in and visit. So how do they utilize internet? The second would be to look at how has social media impacted. Uh, you know, destination marketing. So when you look at some of the locations like Mauritius, we look at the Caribbean, we look at Ibiza, for example, we look at certain islands in Greece, uh, you yep. look at Santorini, we look at Mallorca in Spain, we look at Greece. These islands have an economy which is primarily the tourism sector. So across the year, they need to keep activities on and uh, you know, offers on, discounts on, some sort of promotions on, which will allow them to bring in tourists to this destination because the whole economy in general is composed or, you know, kind of rotates around, uh, you know, the destination, which is that it is a location for, uh, you know, for example, young couples, it's a location for honeymooners, it's a location for families, uh, you know, it's a location uh, or a holiday location, uh, you know, for uh, conferences, business uh, meetings, you know, some sort of seminars which happen. You look at FIRA, for example, in Barcelona, um, yeah. and that is one of the, you know, uh, cities in which a lot of conferences happen. So, you look at the impact of how social media is contributing towards, you know, marketing some of these destinations. And last but not least, you try and develop a connection between the online travel agencies and a bit of thread on how, they are, uh, how marketing is helping the online travel agencies to build direct relationship with customers. So that is what we are looking at studying today and I think it's going to be slightly uh, interesting uh, from a point of view because it is just of what we get to see in the day to day life marketing that which is something that we think about, about today, you know, in a lot of different locations, whether you are looking at this week information on the mobile, tablet, TV, you know, different types of things. Is that okay? So let's start yeah. with a few slides that I've got. So one of the things that we look at, you know, in the marketing mix, if you have you heard and come across a term called marketing mix? Yeah. Okay. So when you look at the marketing mix, I think I yeah, that's correct. So when we look at the marketing mix, we come across certain terms like, you know, product, price, place, uh, you know, promotion. The four Bs, essentially, as we talk about, which classify and, you know, um, segment our audience uh, in terms of, you know, providing products and services or services uh, or goods, whatever you call it, which are much more tailored to make their demand. So when we look at, um, you know, place, P for place, one of the places which has become now very pertinent is the internet. So internet is also a place Oh, it is a virtual, uh, you know, place, but it is a place where a lot of customers today really come out and, you know, uh, reach out primarily to, um, you know, browse the website, get hold of information, do comparison, lots of different types of activities. So when we look at internet in particular, for us, if we have to compare it and put it in, in the context of the marketing mix, will actually relate to what is called the place as far as we are concerned. Is that okay? Yeah, when you look yeah. at the place and you look at a virtual place, websites in that case can become the place where customers actually visit. So internet mm -hmm. and the, the location or the site or the address that they visit is primarily going to be websites. The right? website. Yeah. Now a lot of when I say a lot of every business today which is the global business or even if it's a small business, big business, medium mm -hmm. business, they cannot afford not to have a website. The website has yeah. become the primary source of information today mm. to reaching out to customers, which can give static or dynamic information. Now, static would mean, you know, things mm. like about us, things like, um, you know, uh, the functions, features, uh, the price rate, uh, the rate list, for example. These are static, uh, you know, information which the customer gets, which do not change that frequently. For example, right. the address of the property will not change. Yeah. Okay. Right? But when we look at websites also giving dynamic information, when I say dynamic is the information mm -hmm. which changes with time, there would be things like offers, discounts, rooms, photographs, right. yeah. sort of 
options which are available on the website. Right. So, right. if you look at the early 90s, uh, when the internet came about, everybody started to get websites on, and these websites were very basic. In the mm -hmm. mid-2000s, these websites became dynamic. Uh, they started to track a lot of information. They started to, uh, when I say track information means, they started to look at building subscribers. They started to look at capturing certain data or information through the filling up of forms, which allowed the uh, companies to actually retain some information about the customers who are visiting their website. But in today's day and age, the website has become one of the most important, uh, you know, uh, tools through yeah. which they can interact with customers. Because from the website, you send out newsletters, you capture data, you look at subscriptions, you look mm -hmm. at bookings, if it's an e-commerce enabled website, and yeah. you are able to send out as many messages as possible in real time using the website because it allows you to interact almost with the customer uh, in a real time basis and uh, on a dynamic basis. So this has yeah. become one of the most important tools through which you know information is now put out rather than brochures, flyers, which also complement the information being put out on the website. But this has clearly become the single most important source of information today. Yeah. If you are looking at uh, you know booking a room, visiting a property, looking at the property, whatever it is, and yeah. that is why you cannot ignore that uh, you know even a restaurant, a takeaway. You look at any such. Um, uh, you know, business which is directly yeah. or indirectly related to the industry has some sort of a website today. Now, if we look at how things have transformed, we look at one of the things that bookings after I would say the 2000 when we had the dot com bubble burst, we typically saw that reservations started to happen online. So that is where we see the advent of online travel agencies coming into foray. So early 2000, where the mm -hmm. industry actually struggled because of recession, downturn, but the online channels, or when I say the internet side of things, started to pick up in this sector. Yeah. And that is where information that then was available transparently to the customer. So up until now, if you look at a scenario maybe 20 years back, you went to the tour mm -hmm. operator and you said, okay, the price of the hotel is so-and-so, the room is so-and-so, and these are the uh, you know total package. But there was no way you could confirm this until unless you either called the hotel directly. In that case, the hotel directed you back to the travel operator. But today, because of the availability of information on the internet and the price points and everything, the customers can quickly cross-check that what I am being charged and what I am being offered directly if I book the hotel on this mm -hmm. website, isn't it? So yeah. commissions, if you look at, have become uh, you know uh, something which is like a sore point which customers are not very happy to pay if they do not see the value addition happening from the travel operator side or the tour operator side. Right. <laughs> so in this case, what we do see is that in order to cut costs and in order to remove intermediaries, when we looked mm. at the advent of global distribution systems, internet yeah. in general and websites in general played a very significant role to eradicate middlemen, intermediaries, and also do away with commission structures, which were highly prevalent in this uh, you know, sector. Mm -hmm. And then what we also get is that with the removal of intermediaries, it meant that these um, you know, um, uh, hotels, for example, were able to offer more attractive packages and benefits in terms of both price points, but also in terms of tangible uh, packages when you booked with the operator or the hotel directly rather than going through the operator. Right. Now, in the age of internet and connectivity, we are you know, also looking at putting out a lot of information. So website mm -hmm. is a medium through which you get information. That means if you're looking for something, if you're searching for something, if you're wanting to get hold of some information or data, what you do, the first thing that you do is, I will open up Google and I go onto a particular website and I would find that information before even making a phone call or making an inquiry. Mm. So if I look at um, uh, bookings in, say, New York, just as an example, um, booking, so hotel bookings in New York. Yeah. Now, the moment you see is that there are some sponsored ads which are coming through 
on on Google, which is AdWords here, and then there yes. are some direct links which are coming through for websites which have oh, lot of different types of hotel rooms. So here, website is a source in which you get information from. But social media, if I look at it and put it in this context, is a medium through which you can consume. That means you can get information, but you mm-hmm. can instantly also put out information uh, about your thought, your preferences, uh, you know, your experience. If you've stayed at a, pro- at stayed at a property or a hotel, yes. so social media linkages into website started to happen when the hotels, or say, for example, in this case, let's take the example of hotels. They started to collect feedback and they started to put that feedback out in the market to further, uh, you know, get word of mouth out that we have provided a fantastic service and yeah. this because of the service you should choose this hotel. So it was really a second outlet through which social media websites also mm-hmm. then uh, provided a channel to reach out to customers. But in this case, most hotels or properties or, you know, the uh, industries associated with the sector actually put out information about customer experiences, which mm-hmm. allowed uh, people to comment, uh, consume, and also further distribute that information to say, yeah, hey, I've stayed at that hotel and, you know, the service I received was fantastic. If you're looking at traveling to this, uh, you know, location, I would recommend yeah. this one to you. And that yeah. was... Uh, you know, the effect that social media websites actually created. So they helped propagate the message which, uh, you know, the uh, hotel companies were actually trying to put out through the website. And that is where we see the outlets of things like, you know, we see the Facebook pages Mm -hmm. of most companies coming up online. Yeah. Almost every business now has a Facebook page or Instagram. That, there you go. So if you look at Facebook, we look at Instagram, as you, as you rightly said, we look at, you know, YouTube uh, in mm-hmm. terms of you yeah. want to look at the rooms, uh, you know, yeah. how the rooms look like in a property and things like that. So you have got lots of this media, which is now available. Uh, and this is the remit of social media, which allows you to put out information. And that is where customers today actually look for, uh, you know, reviews, look reviews, for, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So they look, they basically look at information beyond what the hotel website is actually, you know, providing. Personal, personal customer experience, let's say. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So when we look at now, if, if, taking it a step further, if you look at the early 90s, we had the mobile phone, but they were just normal, uh, you know, phones in which messaging and uh, text messaging and voice was enabled. But when we look at the mid-2007 uh, onward, five onwards, Blackberry is becoming very popular. They allow texting and also sharing of other picture-related messaging, as we used to call them, picture messaging. But with the advent of iPhone and smartphones really catching up from 2008, 2009 onwards, what we saw was that uh, it was not just the voice, but it allowed consumers to basically interact with some of these properties, the websites, the social media platforms, using their smartphone. And smartphone... Because of the ecosystem which got introduced from companies in terms of the, uh, you know, Apple Store and the Google Play and, you know, some of the Windows mobile stores, a lot of these applications which started to, uh, you know, be making, uh, uh, were made available in terms of the mobile phone, smartphone essentially, allowed you to directly go across to the customer and this provided another interface. So we have websites. We have social media, and then we have smartphone, which allows you to browse websites, but also applications, which directly, which in some cases bypass the website and allow you to still get access to information, consume information, distribute information, or, you know, uh, let your preferences and views known about it. Right. Today, with the smartphone market at about 1.3, 1.4 billion phones a year in terms of sales, and the total established base of smartphones in the world is roughly reaching 3 billion, you can see the amount of information which can actually be stored, retrieved, uh, shared, and, you know, uh, propagated through this medium alone if you look at this as a channel. So smartphones itself have become a channel because they have access now to connectivity, and this connectivity through the Internet allows, in some cases, companies to reach out to the customers even by passing websites. And this allows outlets of social media and other things to be, 
you know incorporated into uh, you know the interactions uh, happening with the customer mm-hmm. now let's look at one of the other things in terms of how is internet being used as a marketing tool so so far we understand things like the use of internet uh, internet made available websites now websites at some stage provide information but then social media came in and social media allows you to consume but also distribute information and then to a certain extent when we look at one of the devices on which this can be accessed which is a smartphone it kind of also speeds up the way propagation of information can happen uh, specifically from a point of view of uh, sales and marketing or reaching out to the customer yeah now when we look at marketing as a tool here we are going to be talking about things like you know um so for example we we are on the internet we have a website but what does the website do for you are you just looking at putting out the information are you looking at getting bookings are you looking at getting inquiries lead generation and all these tools to a certain extent when we look at a facebook page instagram uh, we look at youtube there is a bit of monetization which is also come into these channels so right these can make money from social media by way of advertising there by way of promoting and selling goods and services so if you see in certain cases facebook pages are now being used to you know do bookings or sell packages and things like that also for hotels so there are lots of people who are now designing bespoke packages which can actually be sold from their own setup uh, page on facebook because right. this allows them to reach out to their own network of uh, you know friends and within their network of friends they are able to promote and sell some of these you know services so companies in this sector see this as a potential way to reach reach out to customer groups which they would not ordinarily reach out to because one they do not have access to their information and second they would have not maybe utilized the services or have would have stayed in that hotel so that way they do not have information about that customer to be able to reach out to them right so this allows them to basically look at doing a bit of personalized marketing through the route of social media and also able to reach out to new set of customer groups or customers in a wider location or say for example in a wider audience and yeah. this tends to then happen through something called you know a paid advertising is that okay yeah yeah so when we look at paid advertising there are different forms of paid advertising we can look at paper we are not going to go into that uh, you know detail but certain examples would be things like we need to know what is pay per click advertising that means if a company advertises uh, if i just go back for a second when i looked at mm-hmm. hotel bookings in new york now this is a paid advert so if i click on it google makes money on it at the end of it but because they are coming up on top in terms of the inquiry Uh, that yeah. is where the positioning of the uh, you know the advert is allowing the hotel or this particular website to be on the top search and for that they are paying a bit of premium to say okay if you yeah. uh, because we are paying uh, uh, for paid advertising we are going to be the first search if somebody looks at booking a hotel in new york and that allows them to reach out to the customer first as against yeah. some of the other websites which are down below so there are four adverts and then you see there are other sites which are coming up but prominently is so well optimized that in the first page itself because we are using the word booking you know yeah. which is directly related to the site called bookings.com yeah. is so well optimized that in the first page itself as you can see all the searches are more or less uh, you know uh, the major part of the searches are all more or less you know booking.com yeah. and then you have last minute expedia and kayak but they are way down as far as the searches are concerned uh, and bookings tend to occupy you know more than half a page on on this site so this is nothing but pay per click advertising that means if i click on this there must be some sort of a budget that they put and that is helping uh, you know pay for uh, you know the charges which they have uh, looked at in terms of coming up as first on the search with regards right. to booking hotels in new york that also so, comes that also yeah. comes into play the meta search that we were speaking about before that is correct okay. so <clears throat> that is absolutely correct so in this case some of the um, you know the uh, optimization which has happened for this particular uh, location has been done using meta search landing pages and also you know click to action cta models 
which allows them to create multiple pages <coughs> in terms of landing pages, and that still reroutes the customer back to their uh, you know website. So meta search could also mean there are blogs, there are customer opinions, like for example, rating of hotels. And these are all also contributing to uh, pushing the search up of this website to say the first spot as far as the results are concerned. Okay. <coughs> now, if we look at what is the role of internet in uh, you know hotel marketing? So one of the first things that we look at is primarily that it is uh, acting as a booking tool. That means it allows customers to make reservations and this can be done in real time. So if I click on this particular website, as you can see, and once this opens up, I can actually search a hotel, choose a place, and say I want to stay for four days, uh, you know, one, and then do a search. It will allow me to find a property and then say, for example, see all the available rooms, choose one, and I can do a booking online straight away. Yeah. Right, so I can reserve, I can, uh, you know, call the hotel up. So it gives me multiple options through which I can actually make a booking online. So internet, one of the things that it allows you to do is act as a booking or a reservation tool. And this has now been prevalent in the industry since 2002. And it is one of the major distribution tools as far as any particular business in this sector is concerned. So when you look at takeaways, you look at restaurants, you look at pubs, you look at, you know, uh, for example, events happening, hotels, resorts, you know, airline tickets, any sec any subsector or smaller, uh, you know, um, different type of operation that you look at within the sector, you will see that internet uh, is a major tool which allows, you know, marketing. Okay. Now, this is a data, a bit of, uh, you know, data on the slide which primarily tells you that today these are the sites which are, uh, you know, quite popular as far as bookings. Are concerned reservations are concerned so Expedia for example is 34 um, percent you know Travelocity Orbit and Expedia kind of take up 34 percent of the share there are other websites which are 27 percent there are lots of people which go across different websites on the basis of referrals there are travel company websites when you look at Thompson, TOI, you know Jet2 Holidays which yep. provide integrated packages and then as you can see there's a bit of a decline in terms of traditional travel agent uh, you know, business, and that is drastically declined. There is, that is still substantial at about 9% because if you look at, um, you know, um, customized tailored packages, you will still have two operators now today becoming a niche where they have uh, kind of, you know, rather than offering all types of vacations or bookings, they now kind of narrowed it down to niche or tailored holidays. For example, you're getting married, you want to, you know, um, take friends and family across Las Vegas or maybe go and, uh, you know, get married in Prague or Amsterdam. Now, that's a specific occasion wherein you need uh, a wedding planner. You need some sort of a specific package to be built mm -hmm. because there are a number of people which will be going same flight, same hotel, and you're going yeah. for an occasion. And that is where the role of travel operator will be, uh, you know, significant because these packages cannot be, these bespoke packages cannot be put together by large operators like TUI, Thompson, or you know, to holidays, but you will still need to go through a travel operator. So they have kind of carved out a niche now within right. offering what is called tailored packages or packages. Package, yeah. Unusual, yeah. So that gives you a bit of perspective. Now, second thing that we look at, what is the role of internet? The second thing that we look at in terms of the role of internet is that it is helping drive revenue. So today, hotels can actually put out empty rooms by straight away using the website and the uh, internet to decrease the price and then uh, get more bookings. So for example, if you look at booking a room, if you want it for today, you might have a price of $90, but mm -hmm. give it uh, till afternoon. If the rooms are still unoccupied, you will see uh, somebody in the management, the general manager takes a decision, okay, let's drop the price to $75. If it still does not attract and sell out all the rooms and uh, you know in the property, then at some stage they will say, okay, Let's drop the price to fifty dollars. Rather than have empty and vacant rooms, it is best for the hotels to now have properties which are rented, uh, you know, and utilized rather than uh, you know um, and having them not utilized and still incurring the expense. So it is helping them increase revenue because it allows that dynamicity dynamics to happen within the uh, you know uh, the business, wherein it allows uh, the tour operator, for example, the hotel, for example, to actually offer 
and change prices to suit the requirements of the customer in order to get more business. Mm-hmm. And this is where it is helping to increase what is called revenue. Right. Now, one of the other things which is the advantage uh, of having direct marketing, when we look at D2C, direct to consumer marketing is because you're doing away with a lot of intermediaries, it is also helping you to reduce costs which are basically spent on traditional marketing mediums. So things like flyers, brochures, hoardings, billboards, you know, TV advertising, radio advertising, mm-hmm. a lot of money is now being spent online in terms of advertising. So yeah. online advertising has overtaken traditional uh, you know, uh, medium of advertising. I think in 2007, 2007 2008, the mm-hmm. digital uh, marketing spent combined by all companies has overtaken the spending on traditional media of marketing, which is things like air, you know, advertising on the airports, magazines, flyers, brochures, yeah. billboards, yeah. TV radio, and all that stuff. So today, marketing expenses can also be directly controlled by the hotel or by a business in this sector, which allows them to have a closer you know, uh, control on the finances of the operation. Yeah. Right? And this means that if the business isn't happening, if it's a recession, if the market conditions are changing, the weather isn't good, they can quickly put a stop to the advertising, which means that they, uh, you know, then have the ability to be able to control their expenses and, uh, you know, their expenses which are happening because of the uh, channel of, uh, you know, outlet of marketing. Right. Now, this has also reduced maybe to a certain extent, you know, the uh, employment opportunities because if they have these channels mm-hmm. which are automated and if things are set then in those cases it also allows a fewer people to manage this side of operations because of offers automation which is now also come into this sector so once yeah. you set the adverts up uh, you can outsource it to the agency to monitor it once you've given them the budget and that also reduces traditional expenses on the manpower side or hr side because you do not need to employ that many people within the marketing side of operations because of the availability of internet and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the channel uh, opportunities it provides to reaching out to customers. Correct, yeah. Now, this point is self-explanatory. You have ease of transactions. Customers have the option to pay through credit card, PayPal, other methods mm-hmm. uh, through which they can make transactions today, uh, bank transfers and other bits, and all this is now facilitated uh, with the advent of e-commerce, which became kind of mainstream in 2006, 7, 8. And today, when you look at the likes of Amazon, eBay, and, you know, all the other retailers, for example, if I just step out and come out of the hotel industry example, you look at most of the retailers today, big uh, shopping malls, they all have websites, they all allow you to buy online, and they are able to take payment online, and this facilitates, you know, ease of transactions for uh, consumers. Now, communication, uh, obviously, yes, it facilitates easy communication. Can you think of an example in terms of uh, what does the Internet facilitate in terms of communication with customers? Uh, well, you can speak directly through email or sometimes uh, on the websites they have a, a little pop-up chat. That is correct. Yes, yeah, so you speak directly on. with the customer. Absolutely. So email and chat is become an option. So if it is out of hours operation, you will generally see that if you are reaching out to the hotel or maybe the website for booking and it is out of office hours or normal operation hours, sometimes yeah. you will see that they have somebody on the chat or an email which will allow chatbot or an email which will allow you to still interact and have communication or you know reach out uh, to the to, to get out get get hold of information. Now, we've re- re- we looked at re- briefly this point of, you know, the role of Internet, which is customer reviews. And this allows, you know, um, user basically through the use of social media and mm-hmm. also through the use of, uh, you know, websites and different, uh, you know, uh, different outlets on the websites and on social media, customers' reviews can be collected. And this allows to, uh, you know, put out a positive word of mouth primarily mm-hmm. uh, to generate more business. Now, feedback surveys have also become electronic. Um, gone are those days wherein you get hold of a survey which is provided to you, maybe at the mm-hmm. reception, during checkout, or you know, in your room. You mostly get these 
electronically, which is coming across to, uh, you know, tools like SurveyMonkey or, you know, some sort of websites which allow you to complete surveys from MailChimp and things like that. So this allows electronic tabulation of data, Google Forms, uh, you know, SurveyMonkey, these are new tools which, uh, you know, most of the um, uh, businesses in this sector are using, which allows them to capture this information electronically, tabulate it, and generate reports, and also provides them optimal opportunities to, you know, kind of data mine to uh, understand the and, and reuse this data in terms of understanding why this has happened, how this has happened, and, you know, how this can be used uh, further. Right, yeah. Okay. So when you look at, say, for example, SurveyMonkey, um, you know, this is a survey website uh, through which uh, questionnaires, one created, can be sent across to customers. It allows them to set up reminders if the customer has not filled that in. Uh, mm -hmm. It collects data uh, and, you know, analyzes it, puts into graphs, reports, things like that. We also have used it in the past, uh, you know, sometimes. Um, but obviously, we've moved away from it because we've now got something all integrated. But this allows us to get hold of customer data primarily uh, from a point of view of, you know, um, getting feedback and also, um, I think, probably discontinue the account. So it allows us to get feedback and, you know, collate it and then look at why this is coming coming out as a result. And then this is then fed into the quality department. Quality department looks into finding out the reasons behind it, and then what could be the course correction which needs to be done in order to ensure that, you know, you're still able to provide the best possible, uh, you know, experience. Yeah. So on this side, I think when we look at, uh, you know, the impact of Internet and social media, this helps us to cover some of the key important points to understand, you know, what is the importance of Internet today. So it facilitates uh, speedier communication, uh, some part of it has been, become electronic, allows you to reach out to customers through various channels, um, and then it makes the whole process of booking, uh, you know, making reservations or providing information, uh, you know, quite quicker, prompt, and also efficient from a point of view of, uh, you know, providing it to the website and social media and mm -hmm. associated online travel agencies. Yeah. Now, social media obviously um, is primarily being used to generate reviews uh, for, you know, also look at what about marketing and also allows customers to share their thought preferences and, you know, experiences more or less on a real-time basis. Yeah. And last but not the least, there's a closer relationship between the online travel agencies and the user, usage of the medium of marketing, which is using the marketing medium through the internet or through the websites because it allows in the faster propagation of uh, the information. And in real time, this allows customers to compare information which has been put out on the website as against the information which is being provided by the uh, online travel agency. Right. Is that okay? So any yeah. questions on this? No, no. So apart from this, I think in terms of this presentation, there is a bit of a handout which I have got, uh, which will allow you to, you know, kind of um, read into a bit more detail of what we okay. have covered today. And that is up on uh, Moodle. What I will do is once the copy of the recording is available, I will send across uh, the, the copy of that handout to you. And if you read that handout, that should allow you to understand uh, you know, the close relationship between social media, internet, and, you know, travel, tourism, and hospitality sector. Okay, great. So it's, it's a small, uh, you know, news article which basically says how information technology has affected tourism and hospitality industry. So we looked at internet and marketing uh, systems, which are management information system or computer systems, communication, which is happening through now smart smartphones, tablets, e-readers and then you know what is the overall effect this is having primarily on uh, you know helping the tour operators hotels uh, in online travel agencies to uh, reach out to customers uh, you know from a point of view of uh, um, obviously reaching out to increasing revenue and sales for the uh, for their business okay okay so if you have no more questions I'm going to stop here for today and then 